Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Well today I'm doing a tips and tech video because I ended up buying myself a new gift. Actually this is more of like a tool review video. So with some YouTube money that I got from monetized channels that I've been saving up for a little while, I went to our local Canadian Tire and I bought this great big Mastercraft airbrush with the compressor kit. Now this was $144, we're in 2023 in March, and uh, it might be a little bit different, but this one was on sale, so I thought I'd pick it up. Now I've had an airbrush before, a poche one, or posh, posh, however you pronounce that, very, very long time ago, and I actually sold off my air compressor unit, well, the compressor itself, but the uh, posh airbrush I got, I gave it to my dad, and it had some broken cones and other things in it. But anyway, all that aside, let's take a look at this one here and uh, see just how it operates. Here we have our Mastercraft air compressor unit and it consists of seven pieces. Canadian Tire gives you a three-year warranty, airbrush compressor and airbrush kit, 1750 RPM, 58 PSI, and 0.7 CF M. So I'm not quite sure what that is, but anyway. So what we have here is a small air canister underneath the cylinder, and it's got this nice blue handle. There's the off-on switch. We also have a water trap, which is always nice to have, and then the hose here, which screws on. The interesting thing is it's got a quick disconnect coupler on the actual airbrush, and there we have our bottle, which goes in, we also have an airbrush holder, so you can mount this on the side of a table or table edge and hang your airbrush into the holder there. There's also a wrench for you to tighten up various parts and take apart your airbrush. We have the side-mounted mixing pot and then this little cap thing here, which we will take a look at in a minute. We have an easy-to-read air pressure gauge, which is on the side of this thing. There's our air filter, removes harmful contaminants from the airline. Oil-free motor and pump for less maintenance, which is always good. Thermal overload protection with automatic reset. So that means if it gets too hot, this will shut off. And then it'll allow itself to cool down so you can use it again, so it won't wear itself out. Rubber feet. Now this is important because uh, it decreases the vibration from the piston going up and down on your table, as well as it prevents the air compressor from walking across due to vibration. I had that happen with a model of a steam engine once. Hobby crafts, automotive graphics, and more. Change colors and types of paint with ease. The versatile kit works with watercolors, uh, inks, and lacquers, and well, obviously enamels, it'll work with that too. Sorry for my reading there, I can't really see it across. <laughs> Includes airbrush compressor, airbrush, airbrush holder, airbrush cup, five cc's. So that's a little, uh, the little metal one. Glass jar, 22 cc's, cubic centimeters. Airbrush hose, seven millimeter wrench and instruction manual. And a three year limited warranty. So if you're gonna get one of these, Make sure you fill that out and send it in, in case it blows up in year 2.11. <laughs> anyway, airbrush compressor and airbrush kit. Okay, so like I said before, 1,750 RPM, revolutions per minute, 58 PSI, that's your air pressure, and then 0 0.7 CFM, air, PI cubed per minute. So that's at 40 PSI. Okay, anyway, so that's, I do believe that is the air coming out of the hose. But if you know a little bit better on this one, let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, so I'm going to open the box and then take the parts out and we'll take a look at it that way. So the first thing we should always look at is, of course, the instruction manual. But I'm actually going to do everybody a great big favor because I know some people don't like it, not naming any names, but I know who you are. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to just show a couple little highlights out of this thing, so we'll just move along quicker into the actual airbrush itself. So here we have an illustrated view of all the components that make up our airbrush kit. So in no particular order, I'm just going to read them down the list. 
because here it shows them in different areas as to what's written up above here. So we have the airbrush compressor, the power switch, the power cord, the power cord plug, handle, air filter and regulator, adjustment knob, pressure gauge, water drain valve, air outlet, the air hose, which they note is six feet long or 1.8 meters, airbrush, airbrush nozzle, fluid needle, airbrush housing, protective cover, finger level, adjustment screw, needle chuck, yeah, needle chucking nut, needle chucking nut, glass jar, 22 cubic centimeters or three quarters of an ounce, the metal cup, which is five cubic centimeters, metal hook, and a wrench. So that's all in this illustration here. So here on page 10, we have the setup of the airbrush compressor and the airbrush. And this is showing the unit with the air hose screwed on and the plug going to be plugged into the wall, as well as their airbrush assembled and with the glass jar on it being hooked into the end of that air hose. Here we have the operating instructions, and it does show that you can either wind this to the right or to the left to adjust the air pressure, and then it looks like you push it down. So it's almost like a child-proof safety cap. Push it down and then turn it. So I'm going to have to try that. So there is the little pepcock on the bottom, which will drain the water out of the system. It's not really a pepcock, because a pepcock, you would uh, turn it and allow the water to come out. This one, I think the water just comes out. And then here's the entire mechanism of the airbrush, showing that you push this down and you can pull it back, which should. Now, I did have a posh airbrush before, and it was dual action. So if you pushed back, that made the needle go back, which gave you a bigger spray zone out the end. This looks like a cap to protect the nozzle when not in use. Anyway, so there is all of that. Now here's the painting procedure, and I've tried to show this in a lot of my YouTube videos, and this is where, uh, not necessarily from these instructions, but this is the principle of it all. So what you want to do is you don't want to swing your arm when you have this thing. You want to go straight across parallel to the surface that you are painting. So before you ask me, well, why can't I swing my arm? Why does it have to be parallel? This is the reason. If you swing your arm like this, you know, across, what happens is right here on your product or your model or whatever you're going to paint, it's very thin. Then as you come in here, you get extremely thick right in the center because that is the closest that this gun is going to be to the item. And then as you come out here, again, it's going to swing away much like it's showing here. So you're not getting like before where you're getting nice, perfect, even coverage all the way across. What you're getting is... You're going to get a run by doing this. So you get thin on the edges and thick right in the middle. And of course, as we know, the more paint you put in one spot, the more it's going to run. The instruction book shows two exercises so far. The first one was the spray painting, which I just showed the correct and incorrect way. The second is a position and density control. So what it says to do here is get a piece of paper or cardboard and lightly pencil a grid of one half of an inch or 2.5 centimeter squares on a piece of paper. Use diluted India ink or water soluble materials for this exercise. Hold the airbrush approximately a half an inch or 1.25 centimeters away from paper and spray small dots on the intersecting lines. So you go there, 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 da, da, da. It says after placement is accurately achieved in large dot size by allowing more material to flow through the airbrush and by increasing the distance between the airbrush and the paper. So you start off with little dots, then you go bigger. Then it says, do not hold the airbrush too close to the paper or hold the finger level all the way back and down. This action will cause puddles to form and spread. So that's what they're, they're trying to do, to get you to train your finger and your mind into spraying this to get the right consistency. So the next exercise is the freehand straight lines. So that, of course, is trying to get your consistency to do these lines. And then the other one is to do it this way with a tapered line. So that would be to uh, spray it and then move across and pull the trigger back as you're moving, because, of course, that would be the bigger dot. So I was right. When you move, pull the trigger back, it's like my old Posh A1 or Posh airbrush. When you pull it back, you actually slide the needle back inside the uh, spray gun, or the airbrush, I should say, and it opens up the hole to the wider hole opening. 
Exercise four is about even tones. So here are the different figure images for the tones and varying the shades. And here it says figure 16 is a combination of masking and various shades. So that's another exercise to do. And then there's also this spotlighting exercise as well. So again, really cool uh, instruction book on how to use your airbrush. Also included in the owner's manual is the maintenance for your gun to make sure it always will spray and be good for those three years. And then we also have a troubleshooting guide in here as well. On page 21, we also get a parts list going on with the exploded view of the air compressor itself, followed by an exploded view of the actual airbrush, followed up by the three-year limited warranty contract and what it means to the consumer. And since Mastercraft is a Canadian-made brand by Canadian Tire, we also have to have our instructions en français for those that live in Quebec or who are fluent French speakers throughout the country. The first item coming out of the box is our hose, and it is a nice braided type of hose with the knurled ends, which also have the threads inside and the metal for the air line to go through. That, of course, is just at the tip to hold on our little ends. This is six feet, they tell me. <laughs> but again, nice flexible hose, easy to coil back up again and uh, that nice blue shimmery metallic -y kind of color. Again, really, really nice stuff. So the airbrush itself is packed in styrofoam packing inside the box and also comes in this nice plastic bag and it smells like fresh new electronics. <laughs> you know that smell. Anyway, there's the cord. Now, one thing it is, is uh, it's got the three prong grounded line here which is quite common over here in North America slash Canada. And uh, we're running off of 120 volts, just in case you want to get one of these things. I'll give you the voltage so it's not like you got to get special converter like 220 or whatever. But that's 220 is basically your dishwashers and your ovens and your washing machine. Actually, I'm not sure on the dishwasher, but anyway. So that's where we use more voltage here. But overall, we don't. So I'm taking this out of the plastic bag, I hope. Always remember to exercise caution with elastic bags. Uh, plastic bags around kids. Okay, anyway. So here we got the handle, which goes up like this. A little bit... Uh, I guess there's some tension there. But at any rate, the cord should be long enough to reach your plug <laughs> i hope anyway so let's just turn this a bit uh, i'll turn it this way so there's that pressure gauge up top and then i do believe this might be an adjuster i have to take a look at the instructions but uh, there should be an air pressure regulator adjuster which i do believe is this now, I've seen some YouTube videos where they had an earlier version of this from about two, three years ago, and this big top is not on it. Yeah, I guess I'll have to try to mess with that on my own time. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go up. Yeah, I'll read the instructions. <laughs> Can't break my brand new thing, right? Uh, so here's our water trap, and it looks like it's got a nice copper or uh, mesh in there. Not sure if it's copper. It almost looks like gold line. Could be brass. And uh, there's the water outlet. So if this does start getting water and contaminants in through it, it should all drip into this filter and drip out onto the floor. I like the uh, blue plastic on here to protect the front. Gives a nice look. And then here we've got the air-cooled head on the top. So again, quite nice. Let's. Uh, I'm going to try to plug it in so we can hear what it sounds like. So I've plugged it in, and now here's what it sounds like. Okay, so it's a nice, quiet little motor. You know, you could paint at three in the night, at three in the morning, and uh, not wake anybody up in the household if you're going to be down in the basement like myself. I can even talk over top of it. It's not, you know, destroying the uh, airwaves with the sound. But, of course, it doesn't help this video. But anyway, there it is. So let's get the air hose on there as well as the gun itself. 
Here we have the airbrush kit itself, and this is actually sealed in plastic so it doesn't open up inside the shipping container, which is always quite nice. Also protects the clear plastic from getting scratched. So now let's open up this father-in-law pocket knife I've got, and I will carefully try to cut the plastic off. Let's see here. Did that cut it? It did! <laughs> Hooray! Sometimes when you film this stuff, that doesn't really, really work, you know? Okay, so move that knife. Now remember your knife safety from Scouts Kids. Always close that blade before you put it over there. Because uh, with an open blade, you can easily cut yourself. <laughs> Reach over there and grab something later. So here we've got our warnings. Clean your airbrush immediately after each use. Dried spray material can cause malfunction of airbrush at your next use due to the blockage of nozzle and needle and the damage to the internal paint channels of your airbrush. Elsa says use watercolors inks for your airbrush. If you use water-based paints, lacquers with this airbrush thin properly following the manufacturer's instructions. It is not recommended that you use latex, oil-based paints, lacquers, or enamels. Oh, I guess I was wrong with this airbrush. Read and understand the instructions, instruction manual and make sure that you are operating your airbrush properly to get the best performance. I might try this with enamel anyway. Okay, so they've got, also got this plastic uh, bubble protector here. Ooh, nice hard blue foam. That's really good stuff. So, of course, here's your paint bottle, which just unscrews. This is the siphon method. So the air goes across the top of this and siphons it up through the straw. Now, here we've got our little wrench. Again, nice little piece of metal. Okay, I'm just going to put this back for now. This is a quick connect or disconnect type of, uh, of fitting on here, which is pretty interesting, actually. Not sure where I'm going to be using that. Here we've got the little holder. So you would put two screws not included onto the side of your table or wherever you're going to be using this. There's our little cup. I'll get back to this in a sec. <laughs> There's our cup, which uh, is for the quick mix. Again, it's siphon style. And this way you'd be filling up your cup with paint, probably to the indentation here. Because again, if you're moving, you don't want it to spill out on the floor. And then the air will come across the top inside the airbrush and siphon the paint up through there. Now the interesting part is going to be trying to get this out. Oh, here I can take this up. Okay, the cap is actually on the airbrush. Oh, so here, this is how that would attach. There is a correct way to do this. I think you got to be like that. So when you're painting it's not going to spill. If you're out here, of course, you're asking for trouble. <laughs> anyway. Oh, before I take the cap off. So this is how the hook works. It would be on your table, hooked up like this somewhere. And then when you need your airbrush, you can just lift it up out of here, spray over there, whatever you're doing, and then hang it back up again on your table side or wall or wherever you've got that. So this is kind of nice. You can actually see the needle back here. So when you move this, you can note the action on here. I'm just going to move the case out of the way so that we can see this on the gray. Okay, so yeah, by moving this back, you're actually moving the needle back and forth, which is always nice to see. Then here, that's a protective cap, which my posh airbrush never had which is why the cone got crushed. <laughs> anyway, and then what's also pretty cool about this, I saw this on another guy's YouTube video, because YouTube is our universal see everything. So it says to push this down and then pull back for your needle action. You could also adjust this by screwing it in. 
Okay, maybe I'm not doing this too well. Oh yeah, it's moving. Okay, you would screw this in somewhere, and then when you let go, that's where your your trigger is going to lock into. So if you don't, if you want a particular spray pattern and you want to hold it on there, you could uh, lock this in place. Again, it's nice. It's got the Mastercraft name written right on the side here, as well as a couple little super small things I can't read from like my full arm's length away. There's a serial number off the back. And then, according to the instructions, everything should just unscrew and come apart for your cleaning. So let's see, there's a knurled bit right in here. There's a lot of threads on there. Come on now. There it comes. So this is for when you're finished spray painting and you want to clean that needle. This should come out. All right, so what I'm going to do is not take this apart because <laughs> I haven't really read the instructions on how to do it. And I just bought this, 144 bucks. I don't want to go and buy another one. <laughs> Wait, does it go all the way in? going to stop turning. It's nice the needle has a little balance on the end too. This little metal ball on the rod. Oh, that's interesting. I guess I got to wind that in a little further. So, yeah, there's the needle. So again, really a nice little unit here for the price. This is how you want to hook up your glass bottle to your airbrush. You want to have it parallel with the hose itself and not pointing out at any weird angle. It just simply plugs in right here to the chamber and it will siphon the paint out of the bottle. And as the air from the hose comes across here and blows across the bottle straw, and what I'm doing here is I'm going to show the air compressor gauge. This is a top-down view. And I did also figure out how this works. So to adjust your air pressure, you have to pull this up like that. Then it free turns. And then when you push down, that's the lock mechanism. So you can't turn this thing anymore so that it doesn't vibrate and give you the wrong pressure. So I'm just going to turn this on. And there you can see the needle moving up to pressure, and uh, it's got quite a lot of pressure. So if you adjust this, you should be able to either bring it up more, or let it loose. There we go. Let's do it this way. Okay, so it's not really moving, but... see what happens. It's given us 60 PSI. So if you see it gives us 60 PSI and then as you're using it it will restart right around the 30 to 40 range. Probably about 35 PSI. And maybe 38. So it's not going to let you lose too much before it starts up again. So again that is something good to know. So now there is quite a lot of air coming out of here. See if uh, you can see it kind of vibrate off my fingers right there. Now, one thing you never really want to point an airbrush at your hand because you can't actually force air into your bloodstream. <laughs> That's what they told me in auto body collision repair. But I think on this test it won't be too bad. So again, if you push down, you'll get air this way. And if you pull back. pull back and push, that's uh, giving you a bigger spray pattern. It would be nice to fill this up with some ink, but I don't know. <laughs> now, my big challenge is I need to find some place in my basement to actually use this thing. 
But overall, that is how the air compressor works from Canadian Tire. So I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where we got to see the Mastercraft Airbrush Air Compressor Kit from Canadian Tire. And I can't wait to use this on some model kits, especially model cars. Maybe it'll help me speed up all those videos. Because you guys have been asking me forever to build something. <laughs> and I've been trying to, but my uh, major problem we have out here in Alberta is it's either winter for 10 months of the year or summer for two months of the year. And it's a windy summer. <laughs> so it's very hard to try to paint things. So with using this, I plan to clear some spot in this great big messy basement of mine and actually have a little poor man's uh, cardboard box spray booth and be able to start painting models. Maybe I can uh, get a video done where I actually build something like HPI guy or right on replicas or one of those guys out there. So again, thank you for watching this video. And if you want to see where to get model cars, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I'll leave a link in the description down below so you can click right to the car section without having to see the other hobby stuff, which you can see anyway, just by looking at the sidebar. And speaking of the sidebar, there's a little thing there saying, sign up for the Monster Hobbies newsletter. Do that and every week there will be a flyer with some savings where you can save big on select items at www.monster-hobbies.ca. So until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.